everybody. It is Big Stack Numismatics. It's Saturday, August 14th. I just want to give a special welcome to all my fellow coin collectors out there. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Um, I have a really cool coin uh, to show you here in just a moment. I think when I first started collecting coins, um, the Standing Liberty Quarter Type 1 was always on my short list of of coins um, to seek after simply because a lot of the lists that are out there of like unique coins uh, to get it's always on that list right along with the 1909 SVDB penny and and all those things but um, so I've had my eye open for for one of these for uh, quite a while and uh, really really happy uh, to get one so why don't I just give you a quick survey of this particular coin and then we'll talk a little bit about it so the coin in question here uh, we have an MS65 full head type 1, 1917. Let's take a look. Sorry for the glare. We'll see if I can zoom in just a little bit. Maybe that will help. Full head. All right. I love this coin. Um, I've mentioned this in the past. I consider myself more of a type collector right now just because my collection compared to some of y'all's is quite small. Um, so I just try to make the purchases that I have count. And as I said, this coin's been on my, my short list for quite a little while. Um, this particular coin, uh, actually, let's talk about a couple of the differences between the Type 1 and the Type 2. Uh, if you take a look at this picture here real quick, you'll see that the one on the left, the Type 1, is uh, bare-breasted compared to the Type 2 where they add the chain mail in. And uh, some people say, you know, when they look, you know, you look at the reasons for why they changed, um... Some people say, well, the nudity was offensive on the, the bare-breasted one. But others say that that's not the case and that actually the, the redesign with the chainmail was due more to, like, show a more martial approach in the midst of World War I. So I'm not sure if anyone has any comments or uh, insight into that. I'd love to hear in the comments. If you look at the back under Type 1, uh, no stars underneath the eagle. And the Type 2, it does add three stars in. So just another little bit of a, a difference there as far as that, that goes. Uh, the mintage on this, um, and first of all, 1917 is not the first year that they made the Type 1 Standing Liberty Quarter. 1916 is. But the mintage is there, it's like uh, right around 50000 and the, <laughs> the prices on those are, are, are staggering, um, almost 20 times the, the, or more of what uh, these ones uh, cost. Um, but in 1917, they made um, 8.7 million of the, these Type 1s in Philadelphia. They made um, 1.5 million in the Denver and 1.9 million in San Francisco. Um, so this is definitely not, um, I mean, there's many of these floating around out there. But uh, after this, when they started making the Type 2s, they made an additional 25 million of the various mint uh, Type 2s out there. And this particular coin, the Standing, sta the standing Liberty replaced the Barber uh, coinage, and uh, they made these Standard Liberty quarters from 1916 all the way through uh, 1930. All right, so let's take a look quick at the PCA, PCGS uh, certification page on this. And you can see here that uh, of the Type 1s here, um, in this condition, MS-65 full head, uh, there's about 1,266 of these with uh, 762 being graded higher. They list a price guide value of 1100 um, I don't think anyone's paying 1100 for these at the moment, but um, uh, this particular coin went uh, in an auction um, last year for around $630. I ended up picking this up for about uh, $90 more than that, so low 700s is what I paid uh, for this piece. Now if we look at the um, price history on this, this coin, um, going back to the late 1900s, as far as they track their values on this, has never been lower than uh, $850, as far as book value goes. Um, I feel very comfortable picking this up for low 700s, uh, simply because 
It's just I feel like a coin like this is always going to be sought after, right? It's trending higher right now, jumping from 850 up to 1100 in recent weeks. In fact, um, April 1st, uh, 2021 is the last time that this was on book value for 850, and then right at uh, you know around May 3rd they reassess it at 1100 dollars. So. Um, no, that's a nice little jump. It, the book value is kind of meaningless. What's more important is, of course, what actual auction prices and things like that uh, go for. But um, like I said, it's a it's a coin that I've always wanted, and so um, to get one in great condition like this uh, makes me pretty happy. I also really like this reverse. I think it's just a really clean design. There's some nice toning on this example. All right. So, yeah. Um, I wish that, uh, you know... I had more access to uh, nice coins like this locally. Uh, where I live, there's not a whole lot in, in, term, in ways of coin shows and things like that. I might have to make a nice um, trek sometime. I think the closest big show I can get to is going to be in Chicago. Um, would love to get down there for a nice coin, coin show. Um, other just coin collecting news. So recently... Um, within the past week, the U.S. Mint, um, they uh, released the opportunity to order uh, the new 2021 Peace Dollars, and what a debacle, I think. I just I wish they could figure out how to fix that. Um, so from my standpoint, I went in right away. Um, I get the alert from the Mint, which is nice, saying, hey, today the product is going to be available. And I went in, you know, I have all my stuff uh, stored in there, logged in, and right at the stroke, as soon as it says it's available, I add it to the cart, fine, no problem, go to checkout, and, uh, you know, do put in my credit card information, all that kind of stuff, Go to, and then it says, error, it takes me to a screen, and I thought, I, I'm out of luck, I don't know what's going on, and then I see that my credit card was charged, but I got no... Um, nothing from the Mint that said that it was successful. I was like, what the heck? And then about four hours later, I get an email that says that it was successful. But I don't know. I just I hate that in the moment there's the traffic. They can't deal with the amount of uh, Internet traffic and stuff that they have. But I was successful in ordering uh, three 2021 Peace Dollars, and those are going to go directly to my children and their uh, coin collections that we have going for them. Um, I also was able to get the, uh, the Morgan 2021 with... Uh, uh, CC uh, Privy, and those will be coming too. And I, I don't know when they're shipping. I feel like it's relatively soon for those because I ordered those in May. But uh, those will be coming, in and I'll be happy to uh, to show those when they come. But uh, yeah, back to the Standard Liberty. Um, this is a fine coin, and it's one of those that I've wanted for a long time. So very, very happy to add this to my uh, collection. Lovely design. And uh, love the grade that it's in. Um, so I feel like a coin like this is only going to appreciate over time. So love it. And uh, there we go. I appreciate you uh, watching. This is Big Sack Numismatics. I hope everyone out there has a fantastic weekend. And uh, we'll be back at you with the next one in a week or so. Have a good one.